News 46, local coverage you can count on. Simplify, I'm your host, Mark Bonstein, or as I was commonly referred to as Staff Sergeant B. Happy Thanksgiving, this uh, November 24th. And we're going to get started on my influential hero in a minute. First, we're going to say what happened on November 24th. In 1943, the Marine Corps, the Japanese forces mount a small attack on the American division on Bougainville. The U.S., the Marines, they held on to their position. And in the Air Force in 1944, 111 U.S. B-29 Super Fortress Bomber raided Tokyo for the first time since Captain Jimmy Doolittle raid in 1942. And in the Army in 1944, the U.S. Army captures crossing over the Sonar River about 25, 25 miles north of the Sarambekan to the south, the French 2nd Division assisted. And in the Navy in 1964, the USS Princeton LPH-5 completed seven days of humanitarian relief to the south of Vietnam, which suffered damage from typhoon and floods. And that's what happened in 1924 in this date in US military history. And in the paper, the Pahrump Valley Times, the Salvation Army Food Toy Assistance Sign-Up. The Salvation Army Christmas Food and Toy Assistance applicants are being accepted by appointments through November 18th. Well, it passed. Uh, 240 uh, Darn Street individuals should call. You can try to call up to see if uh, they can use help for possibly upcoming for Christmas. And it's, uh, they need people, and you identify your household number of proof of the residents and the families that are qualified for the Christmas food box drive and, uh, and for children 12 and under. And my next uh, influential he uh, leader is going to be Wesley L. Fox. He was a Medal of Honor recipient. But first, you know, we always get the guests on the show. We talk about why we serve the country and uh, get everybody's opinion. And surfing through the web again, I'm going to give you the opinion of uh, why we serve this country from uh, the Duke. So I'll let him uh, express himself on this. You ask me why I love her? Don't give me time. I'll explain. Have you seen a Kansas sunset or an Arizona rain? Have you drifted on a bayou down Louisiana way? Have you watched the cold fog drifting over San Francisco Bay? Have you heard a Bob White calling in the Carolina Pines? Or heard the bellow of a diesel in the Appalachia Mines? Does the call of the Niagara thrill you when you hear her waters roar? You look with awe and wonder at her Massachusetts shore where men who braved a hard new world first stepped on Plymouth's rock. Do you think of them when you stroll along a New York City dock? Have you seen a snowflake drifting in the Rockies way up high? Have you seen the sun come blazing down from the Right, Nevada sky. You hail to the Columbia as you rise into the sea, or are you headed at Gettysburg, or struggle to be free? Have you seen the mighty Tetons who watched an eagle soar? Have you seen the Mississippi roll along Missouri's shore? Have you felt a chill at Michigan when on a 
winter's day her waters rage along the shore in thunderous display? Does the word aloha make you warm? Do you stare in disbelief when you see the surf come roaring in at Waimea Reef? From Alaska's cold to the Everglades, from the Rio Grande to Maine, my heart cries out, my pulse runs fast, the mind of her domain. You ask me why I love her? I have a million reasons why. My beautiful America, beneath God's wide, wide sky. That's why we defend the country, and you heard it from the Duke. This country's worth fighting for. All right. Thank you, Duke. You're going to get it from him. He'll get it all the way. Okay. Influential leader, Wesley L. Fox, Marine Colonel. He was born September 30th, 1931. He's a decorated United States Marine veteran and retired a colonel in the Marine Corps. Fox earned his nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor for his actions over in Vietnam, in addition to his 43 years of action, of years of service. He is a distinguished by having held all the enlisted and the officer's ranks from private to colonel, and uh, the exception is a sergeant major. He retired only upon reaching his mandatory retirement age of 62. Fox is regarded as a legendary hero with the Marine Corps and is known to many Marines. When I was in NCO Academy as a sergeant, we had the distinct privilege of, he was our guest speaker at one of our, um, two weeks before our graduation. And he had uh, he briefly touched on his uh, Medal of Honor and what he did, and I have the citation. It's kind of lengthy, and then the, the colonel kind of summed it up in 30 seconds, really. But... Uh, he was born in 1931 in September. He was born in Hindron, Virginia. And he served Marines from the years of 1950 to 1993. Made it to the rank of full bird colonel. So he's one of the few people that was prior enlisted and came up from the ranks. They, they call them Mustangers or LDOs, limited duty officers, because they've been in usually ranked sergeant, staff sergeant. You can put in to become a warrant officer and you normally achieve the rank of major, lieutenant colonel tops, and then you're usually at mandatory retirement age. And Colonel Fox was one of the exceptions to make it all the way up to the rank of colonel. And back then, uh, when he came in, 1950, and a lot of these other um, influential leaders that I have, and some of my guests, he had a service number, and his was 096702. And some of the units he was under, or he was in charge of, I take that back, was not, wasn't under, he was in command of, was the 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines, the 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, and those that know about the 1-9, uh, been referred to as the Walking Dead. And one episode we'll talk about how they got the name 1-9 as the Walking Dead. And he was with MAG-11, and he worked at MCRD San Diego, Marine Recruiter, and he was with 2nd Force Reconnaissance Company and Marine Air Detachment. And then he worked at the basic school in Quantico. And the commands held, he was Company A, 1st Battalion, 9th Marine Battalion Commander, and 1st Battalion, 6th Marines. And he was the company, uh, the CEO of the U.S. Marine Corps Officers Candidate School in Quantico, Virginia. And his battles and wars include Korean War, the Vietnam War, Operation Dooley Canyon, and his awards are the Medal of Honor, the Bronze Star with the Vice. And what that would mean is on his ribbon, there is a, a, a gold frame that goes around that particular ribbon. Purple Heart, four of them. 
Navy Combination Metal 2 with Valor devices. Again, it has a V with a frame around the ribbon. He has a United Nations Service Medal. In other work, he was Deputy Commandant of Cadets at Virginia Tech. So he had an impressive career for being in as long as he was until he was forced out. And he was getting on in the years. He is still alive. And, uh, but from, uh, we hear rumor that he was, he was, his health was failing. And uh, uh, Fox was born in Hender, Virginia, Virginia, the oldest of 10 siblings. So back then, the, these people all had a lot of kids. He enlisted in the Marine Corps sh uh, shortly before his 19th birthday on August 4th of 1950. Then Corporal Fox was wounded in action during the Korean War on September 8th, 1951, but returned for a second tour of duty in Korea as a platoon sergeant. After the Korean War service, Fox returned to the United States and served both as a drill instructor and the recruiter and was promoted to first sergeant in May of 66 and soon was commissioned a second lieutenant. After that, he was assigned to Vietnam as a first lieutenant, Fox's actions in the Quan Trang province during Operation Dooley Canyon on February 26th of 1969, which earned him the Medal of Honor. Uh, after being wounded in actions along with most every other member in his unit, Fox personally neutralized one enemy emplacement and directed his men to destroy others. After his executive officer was mortally wounded, okay, Fox continued to direct the actions of his Marines, ordering airstrikes and coordinating the advances until enemies retreated. Fox was wounded again in the final assault, but refused medical attention while he um, reorganized his troops and prepared the wounded for evacuation. His medal was presented to Captain Fox by President Richard Nixon on March 2nd, 1971. He retired to the Marine Corps in September of 1993 and can continue wear his uniform for eight more years as a deputy commander of the cadets for the Virginia Tech. And during his time in Virginia Tech, Fox spoke to his experience in America's next generation of military officers, business executives, and uh, civic leaders. Fox written a book with the experience in the military, Marine Rifleman, 43 years in the Corps, and was featured on the 2003 PBS program, American Valor. As the early 2000s, Fox uh, lives in Blackburns, Virginia with his wife, and he has three daughters. So he's now just taking it easy. His decorations, in addition to his Medal of Honor, decorate including the Bronze Star with the Combat V and the Naval Accommodation Medal with the Gold Star and Purple Heart with three gold stars in lieu of second through the fourth award in combat action ribbon, the Presidential Unit Citation, United States Good Conduct Medal, and the Bronze Star in lieu subsequent award with National Defense Service Medal, one Bronze Star, the Korean Service Medal with three Bronze Stars, United States Service Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal with one Silver Star, and one Bronze Star in lieu subsequent awards with two Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry. The Vietnam, the Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnam Honor Medal First Class and the unit, the Vietnam Unit Cross of Gallantry with Palm. The Korean Presidential Unit Citation and the Vietnam Campaign Medal. So um, I don't know if Jeff had a chance to put up his picture, but you see him in his dress blues. He's uh, very well decorated. And he was given his, uh, presented as we read earlier from uh, President Nixon 
in presenting the Medal of Honor for his services for conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life and above and beyond the call of duty serving as a commanding officer for Company A in action against the enemy in the northern San Shan Valley, Captain then, First Lieutenant Fox, came under heavy, intense fire. So this all happened, he was a lieutenant, but he picked it up as a captain. Usually takes three years to get a Medal of Honor because they have to do the, a lot of the research. That's why the last two people that were given these Medal of Honors, the, the one Army Sergeant and then this, this Marine Sergeant, it takes time because they have to go through due process. They, they go to the, the site. Even happened with, if you ever watched the movie Sergeant York, the, a lot of the higher echelon, they go up there and they look at the battlefield and see exactly what you were doing, and then they take it into account, and then they write up your citation. You don't get it right away like people think. So we were at the point where he was under intense fire, from a large, well-concealed enemy force, Captain Fox maneuvered his position from which he could asset and situate and confer confirm with his platoon leaders as they departed to execute the plan he had devised. The enemy attack and Captain Fox was wounded along with all of the other members in his command group, except the executive officer. Captain Fox continued to direct the activity of his company, advancing through heavy fire. He personally neutralized one enemy position and claimly ordered an assault against a hostile emplacement. He then moved through a hazardous area, coordinating aircraft support with the activities of his men. When his executive officer was mortally wounded, Captain Fox recognized the the company and directed fire to his men as they hurled grenades against the enemy and drove hostile forces into retreat. Wounded again in the final assault, Captain Fox refused medical attention, established defensive, a defensive position, and supervised the preparation of casualties and medevac evacuations. His courage, inspiring, intimate, and unwavering devotion to duty in the face of gallantry personally and personal danger inspired his Marines to such aggressive actions that they overcame all enemy resistance and destroyed a large bunker complex. Captain Fox's heroic actions reflect great credit upon himself and the Marine Corps and in the highest tradition of the U.S. Naval Services. One of the things they didn't touch in there that the colonel did talk about when he was at NCO Academy is that as a captain, he was helping, as he was wounded, he was helping a lot of the other uh, wounded Marines onto the helicopters and get evacuated, and he insisted on being the last Marine to be helo lifted out. He wanted to make sure all the other Marines were helo lifted first. And also see list of uh, Living Medal of Honor recipients. This is if you want to go on the website and further research Colonel Fox. Medal of Honor recipients of the Vietnam War and list of Korean conflicts, Bronze Star recipients. And you can see other, not only Marines, but other branches of, of all the servicemen of all Medal of Honor conflicts and the Bronze Stars. Get on the website and you can find all these people, not just Marines, but all the branches. Every service member that wears the uniform goes above and beyond the call of duty. So, Extra links, Colonel Fox personal page on homeofheroes.com. So if you'd like to uh, write them, he'd love to hear from you. Colonel Fox's Medal of Honor citation is on there, as I read. And uh, and you can go to the library and touch on the uh, general. So, or the colonel, sorry, the general. Wow. And American military personnel of Vietnam War, Marine Corps Medal of Honor recipients, recipients of the Purple Heart Medal, and recipients of the Vietnam Cross of Gallantry, American military writers. These are all the people that you can get on these websites and talk with and have a, uh, if you want it, and have conversation with a lot of these uh, 
officers or just general list of people that were in the military. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll come right back. <laughs> 